what I always tell other young women is you don't have to be perfect, you know, at everything. You have to be okay with knowing that you can be an entrepreneur and not be a perfect entrepreneur. You can be a mom, not be a perfect mom. You can be a, a humanitarian, a philanthropist, and, and, not, and be okay with not being 100%. Hello, this is Marco Le Rock. Welcome to Marco Le Rock TV. My name is Marco. I'm your host for Inside a Great Mind, where we interview entrepreneurs, game changer, TV, for the purpose to inform and inspire you. Today, we're so honored to have Sandra Atti on the show. Sandra, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Who is Sandra Atti, by the way? So, I am an entrepreneur. I am uh, currently co-founder and CEO of Face to Face Africa, which is a pan-African media company based in New York. And I'm also um, a wife and a mother of two girls. Congrats. So I have so many great reasons to celebrate. How old are your girls? Uh, five and six months. Well, congrats. Yes. I have a four and a year and a half. Oh, so both, you know exactly. Both girls. Both girls. Oh, so we're in the same boat here. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just curious. So Face to Face Africa, where that name Face to Face come from? I'm just curious. Let, let, let's start yeah. with the name first. Sure. So when we were thinking about the purpose, of Face to Face Africa and why we really wanted to establish this platform. Um, we wanted a name that uh, really was relevant to the purpose and what we really wanted to achieve. Okay. So when you think of Face to Face, it's the whole idea of direct interaction, coming face to face um, with the reality of Africa and that's really what we wanted to um, help address with our platform is to um, provide a balanced um, a balanced perspective of the African narrative. Okay. So how do we do that? It's by making sure that people are coming in direct contact, in direct connection with the reality of Africa. And we knew that for a long time, the narrative on Africa had been so focused on the negative, right? But what we wanted to bring was the other side, which was mm, the positive, and positive bring the balanced perspective. Exactly. So face to face means coming in real, in, in, con in direct contact with the true Africa, the real Africa, and giving people the opportunity to experience it themselves instead of through the lens of other media platforms. I see, interesting. So what what are kind of the content you guys focus on through your platform? The content, we are a lifestyle digital platform, lifestyle history and culture, and our, our whole purpose is to really be a platform where people of African descent can go and to get informed okay. on who we are as a people. Uh, you know, our history, our culture, the innovation that is taking place within the Pan-African community as well, but more importantly, to really serve as a bridge between black communities across the world and really celebrate our shared ancestry of Africa, right? This great continent that we know, we all know of. So that's really what we do. We, we, we talk about everything, every issue. We cover every issue. There's no limits to, you know, what our platform covers. But so I will assume that most of your audience like in Africa for face-to-face -face Africa, right? You said if most of the audience are in Africa? Yes. No, actually, most of our audience are in the diaspora. In the diaspora. Yes, so we're, we're more diaspora-based, US, UK, um, you know, Canada, uh, but we do have a strong following as in Africa as well, and we're really serving as a bridge to all of like the black communities around the world. So how does Sandra, for instance, like, you know, engage the diaspora to make an impact, like a, in Africa, for instance? How do we engage the diaspora? So what we do is we create engaging platforms for people of African descent to come and to have uh, discourse, to also highlight the things that are happening on the continent and how they can play, the diaspora can play a role. And I personally believe that the, the African diaspora um, 
is going to have to play a critical role in the development or the transformation of the continent. We are really privileged to come here and to have sort of an understanding of what is happening within our communities back home. And I think it is our responsibility to mobilize ourselves and to take um, our experiences um, back home to transform the continent. So what we do is to create those platforms for that um, conversation to happen um, and provide access to information and resources for people in the diaspora. Um, and then also work with companies and organizations back home to really tap into the knowledge and skills of professionals in the diaspora. Interesting. So let's shift the conversation a little bit uh, on women entrepreneurship. Uh, you are a mom, you are a wife, uh, and there's a lot of people out there also who find a challenge because they are, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I cannot become an entrepreneur, I cannot pursue my dream. Uh, what are the things that you can share with those people out there who have a desire, a dream, something burning themselves because they're women or because they're wife or mom, they're like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things women that we do is we get in the way of our own success, right? We always think of so many reasons not to. You know, I could have had a reason not to be here today because I have a six month old who needs me to be home. But I think what I always tell other young women is you don't have to be perfect, you know, at everything. You have to be okay with knowing that you can be an entrepreneur, not be a perfect entrepreneur, you can be a mom, not be a perfect mom, you can be a, a humanitarian, a philanthropist, and, and not and be okay with not being a hundred percent perfect, right? So um, it's not necessarily about all the, it, it's not about making sure the glass is full, it's about just having equilibrium in every aspect of your life and truly being happy and content with whatever it is that you're doing, knowing that you're not going to be perfect at them all. And for me in particular, I have have to say I have a very supportive you know husband so as you go on this journey your spouse make sure you have a community a support system right people family members friends um, you know your your spouse people who can support you because you're going to need that support but what I believe is that nothing should be able to stop me from achieving my dreams I am ultimately responsible for my actions I am here on this earth for a purpose and I have to make sure that I make room for everything, every, all the talents and all the gifts that God has given me um, and to be able to somehow make it all work. And I really think that we have that innate ability as women to achieve it all and to do it all. We're not gonna be perfect at them all and I think that's where most of the time we get in our own way. Yeah, cause, cause, I, cause, I mean, you are 100% right because we, we, we go to a team we want you to make it like right. Exactly. And sometimes for the person you have to fail yeah. and we do and try different things. And, and it's, it's our nature as women, right, to be in control of every situation. But for me, what has worked for me is knowing that I'm not going to be in control of every situation. I'm not gonna be perfect. There are days that I have to prioritize work over my children. Exactly. And there are days I have to prioritize my children over work. So that balance, it's always going to be there. And you have to just be okay with it. But the one thing you should never do is to allow that to stop you, to allow something to stop you from pursuing a, a vision or a purpose or a goal that intuitively you know is your calling. Should never do that. So what I like about you, you're very outgoing. Uh, you, you're out there, you know, making things happen. Who inspires you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, I always, I'm always so grateful to the community of particularly women around me and mentors who have helped me to get to where I am today. And that is very, very important, having a community, a support system, right? Yeah, and I have to say that there are so many, I mean, I can, there are too many to mention, but you know, my, well, well you know, my, um, my mother, number one, she's an example of, the typical African woman, right, very strong, is able to make magic happen with very little. And so I have learned a lot from her and she continues to be my pillar and my, my, my strength, right? 
um, and then also just my, my friends in, in the world of business that I've connected with people who are doing their own thing, who are achieving. They all motivate me to also be the best that I can be, right? And we share our successes, we talk about our failures, and we learn from each other. So for me, I, I have to say so many women, you know, inspire me. Um, I love Oprah, I love Michelle Obama. I'm inspired by their journeys and their stories. And I, I just think that it's such a great time for us women, women of color, because we have such great examples and role models out there. Um, and there's so much positivity that we can't, we don't have an excuse not to be great. So if Sandra has to make a, a one positive change in the world, yeah. what would that be? For me, I believe that my calling here on earth is to help, um, help change Africa's narrative. I really, the, the image of Africa, the brand of Africa is something that is very personal to me and tomorrow actually that's, I'm going to be talking a lot about that because that has really shaped and influenced the, my experiences dealing with that has shaped and influenced the person that I am today. So I have devoted my entire career up to this point to promoting Africa and getting everyone to see what I see in the continent. So I believe that I am living in my calling now and what I want to continue to do is to continue to create platforms that will showcase um, and that will promote and that will celebrate and that will uplift people of African descent. I believe that we have so much untapped potential and we need to just continue to talk about it and continue to amplify our voices, right? Yeah. And not just amplify, how do you amplify our voice as a community? It's by being united. So with my business and, and what I do, it's just creating a platform for that voice, right, to be united and for us to have a stronger say in what is happening around the world. So I am living in my calling and I'm looking forward to just continue to, continuing to expand on that. Excellent. What will be your last advice tip to my audience? I would just like to say to everyone that, um, you know, you have to live in your purpose and um, identify your calling. I really believe that everyone on this earth has something special. We all have a role to play yes. in making this world a better place. And it doesn't have to be big. You don't have to be Martin Luther King Jr. You know, you don't have to be Gandhi. But in your own small way, what are you doing to, whether it's for Africa, whether it's a community that you live in, in, in Nebraska, whatever it is, what are you doing to make the world a better place, right? And I think most of the time we get stuck in sort of our own rat race of life, our own responsibilities. I, I have bills to pay, I have children to care, to care for, but I believe that our purpose here on earth is way beyond that. And if we can find a small way to make an impact, to contribute, whether it's by touching someone's life, whether it's by waking up on a Saturday and going to a soup kitchen to talk to people there about your experiences and helping them find their purpose in life. That could be your contribution. So, you know, work on it, on identifying your purpose and your calling. And I think together, that's how we can make this world a better place. Awesome, Sandra. Thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Awesome. Perfect.